Well, hello everyone. Today I am going to be doing a painting based on a concept sketch that I did on the mythological deity known as the Morrigan. A lot of cross-hatching involved in the concept sketch, but I really enjoy doing concept sketches and I have a guilty pleasure, which is goddesses and mythology. I do these little concept sketches. Some of them never turn into paintings, but this one is going to, and clearly I've come a long way since my first concept sketches. Once I have my concept sketched down, I'm able to scan it into my computer and then print it out onto the scale that I want it to be. And then I can just transfer it with some transfer paper directly onto my canvas to get my line drawing. And if you'd like to see a video on how I create my illustrative concept sketches and how I scan it in and how I change the size of it, please let me know in the comments and I will do a video on that. I use Illustrator pens, graphite pencil, mainly to create my little mock-ups or my concept sketches. And I also will use references, sometimes taking pictures of my own body in order to get hands or, you know, different parts of the body, anatomical structures and whatnot. So once I get the sketch onto the canvas, then I start in with golden open acrylics. And this was actually an experiment that I wanted to try in order to do an acrylic underpainting because golden open acrylics actually perform more like oils, but they're, they're kind of more transparent than high viscosity acrylics. So you get this really cool transparency that you don't get with some acrylics and this blendability that you don't get with regular acrylics. So I thought it might be a cool experiment to try and it worked really, really well. The open acrylics are a lot easier to mix skin colors with too, much more than regular acrylics are. They blend really easily together on your palette. So for the skin tones, I used a combination of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cadmium red light, ultramarine blue, and titanium white in order to get the varying skin tones and the cools and the warms of the face. I make a very kind of multicolor face at the beginning of it because this is going to help me to define where my cool parts of the face are and my warmer parts of the face are. So skin doesn't actually have any specific color. It reflects light. So depending on what is around you, that's what your skin color is going to reflect. So let's just say for instance that you're standing in the sun or the rain, whatever, underneath a red umbrella, well, you're going to look pretty red. You're not going to have the same skin tone that you would be if a picture was taken of you during the blue hour or the golden hour. So skin is extremely reflective, and that's why you can actually get some pre pretty realistic effects by using different colors in the skin. And with the underpainting, I wanted to utilize a lot of different colors with the skin tones because when the oil paint goes on, then I can actually boost the realism, but some of the transparency of the oil paint will allow for the colors of the underpainting to show through. And so you'll get this more realistic looking face because of all of the different colors. It actually makes it look more realistic and less flat it, the more colors that you put into the skin, which is pretty cool. So for the hair, I started out by putting all the darkest colors like the shadows down first and I used a combination of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue in order to get the shadows that come out from the neck and all of that area. And then I went over that with a more watered down alizarin crimson before putting some of the brighter cadmium reds on there. And I did add in uh, cadmium yellow eventually to the palette for the brighter highlights on top of the head and this gives it a really cool effect because all of your darks are already down all of your shadows are already down so the hair you don't have to go all out with the hair you can just give the impression of more realistic looking hair and that's fine um, because you can go back later and you can put some strands of hair on there at the end of the painting. That's where all the detail work will kind of come into play. I kind of regretted having this pattern on the dress because it was kind of a pain when it came right down to it. But it really kind of added to this vibe of her being the Celtic warrior queen. So, and I will talk a little bit about 
um, the Morrigan in general in a second, but I did want her to have kind of this Wednesday vibe with red hair. <laughs> and so my concept drawing, I was thinking a lot about um, Wednesday, the show, the Netflix show from, you know, Wednesday, the Addams Family and her gaze and how she kind of just stood there and had this like blank stare, but a slight smile or a smirk going on. So let's get into what the Morrigan is. And the Morrigan is the Celtic goddess of war. However, she's not only one goddess called Morrigan, but also a trinity of sisters known as the Morrigan. Um, they were shapeshifters who controlled life and death, as well as the three aspects of war, fear, fate, and havoc. And they would often take the shape of crows and fly over the battlefield and were considered to be an omen of death because they decided who lived and who died. So one of the reasons why I decided to make the wings, because the Morrigan is a shapeshifter and shapeshifts into crows, um, I decided to make the wings like full-blown crows was to represent the other two sisters. So, and they have... Um, there are a lot of names that are actually associated with the three sisters. Uh, they're all very Gaelic and difficult for me to pronounce because the spelling of the words has that Gaelic spelling. So the pronunciation of the letters is totally different and I'm not going to name them. But there are a lot of different names that are associated with the sisters of the Morrigan. But I thought that was kind of cool. But Morrigan actually means Phantom Queen or Great Queen. And depending on the translation that you go with. And in some stories, she's one goddess of war. And she can shapeshift into many animals as well as a beautiful woman and an old hag. And it's sort of confusing. Um, but I think it just kind of adds to the mysterious nature of the Morrigan in general. Because there are so many different stories and they were handed down orally. Which is probably why you have two different versions of the Morrigan being three sisters and the Morrigan being one goddess. So because I had used a gold pen in my concept sketch, I really liked the look of it. So I decided to get some 24 karat gold leaf and use that for all of the pattern. And I even included it on the wings because I thought it would kind of complement the center of the painting having the gold as well. So the gold leaf, I waited a day for the whole entire painting to make sure that it was completely dry before adding my gilding adhesive and painstakingly painting it on all the patterns and then certain parts of the wings. And I think it added to the whole effect and kind of gave her more of that royal phantom queen kind of look. And I wanted all all three of the creatures to have the gold leaf on them because like I said before they're representing the two sisters as well so moving on to the oil paint part I'm going to mainly use a lot of glazes at first and kind of get some of the places that are darker because as the golden open acrylics dry they do change color a little bit so the parts that were a lot darker are no longer as dark which is kind of weird for acrylics because they usually dry darker so some places dried darker and other places dried a little bit lighter and I wanted to have a lot more color in the face in certain areas. So I kind of go about this the same way with the oil paint that I did with the golden open acrylics where I'm working with a very similar palette and mixing colors accordingly and then just adding to some of the softness of the face, darkening some areas and giving more depth and dimension. One of the things that I didn't like was the color of the neck. I felt like it was a little too on the purple side and I wanted it to have more of those redder tones because it's surrounded by red hair. So I did make that part look darker and have more of a matching skin tone to the darker parts of the face. And I think it looks a lot better. Um, and that's the beauty of working in layers with paint is that you can change the hue of the colors by using glazes and all the rest of it. I really didn't put um, much oil paint 
on the rest of the painting because I thought it looked great the way it was. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learning a little bit about the Morrigan. And I will see you next time. And feel free to leave any questions in the comment section. All right. I love you guys. Bye.